Welcome back. I'm Dr. April Strom, and in today's video, what we're going to explore is using the limit definition of a derivative to find the derivative of a quadratic function, okay? So suppose we have f of x is equal to negative 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. And what we want to do is we want to find f prime of x in, uh, for this particular function. And we've got to be very careful in doing so because this is a quadratic. It has two places, in fact, for us to actually put in um, a new input that's going to look like an x plus h. So I'm going to get there here in just a second. So we start out, again, with this definition, f prime of x. This is our notation for the derivative that I'm obviously going to leverage. And we now have that this will equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of... And then now here we start with this portion of our formula for the limit definition of a derivative. So in order to find this first piece that's here, f of x plus h, we need to go to our function here and in both places for which I see an input of x here and here in this quadratic function, I need to put in an x plus h instead, okay? So we have negative two times well, in the beginning, x squared, but instead here, this will be x plus h quantity squared. So we have negative 2 times x plus h quantity squared here so far, plus 3 times, now another x plus h comes up, so plus 3 times x plus h, and then I will subtract 1 per my formula. So the stuff that I have in brackets so far is merely this quadratic function here evaluated at x plus h. Now I'm going to conti continue on in my formula, and now I have to subtract off the original function. So I will subtract negative 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. So negative 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. All of that in brackets over here is the original function f of x. And then I will divide that entire piece by h. Again, the H is the same as this H that's here, and I want that H to really be super duper small. Okay, okay from this point, um, now what we need to do is do all the algebra, such as foiling out here, which is really just a form of distribution. So I wanna distribute here, I'll distribute here, and I'm just basically unfoiling all of this stuff so that I get just one long expression in my numerator so that maybe things will subtract off. So we now have f prime of x will be equal to the limit as h approaches zero. It's really important to just continue writing down all this notation. Don't just think it's not important because it is. So we have f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches zero of in my numerator, which is where the bulk of the work is going on, I need to remember my order of operations, which says take care of the stuff that you're having to square first, then you will actually distribute your negative 2. So I'm going to do that negative 2 times, and I imagine x plus h quantity squared is an x plus h times another x plus h. So when I do all of that distribution, I should have x squared plus an xh plus another xh. So I have a total of two xh's and then plus h squared. Okay, I need parentheses here because all of that is still being multiplied by the negative two. Now I get to this section of my expression. Now I need to distribute my three on both the x and that h. So I have plus three x. And same here, I have plus 3h, and now subtract 1. Close bracket, because now all of that is the expansion, well, some of it, of my original f of x plus h portion of the formula. And now, of course, I'm going to subtract off all three of these terms here, and might as well drop the brackets, but to do so legally, you need to distribute the negative, the subtraction that was here in between. So I will... Um, Distribute on my first term, my second term, and my third term. So here we go. We have plus 2x squared, and then subtract off 3x, and then add 1 here in the end. Of course, all of that is getting divided by, so I don't want to extend too far, all divided by an h. 
So I've copied where we left off over here on this side of the board and let's continue on with the rest of our work. So next step would be to do a little bit more algebra on our work here. And uh, so what I need to do now is distribute our negative two onto this expression. So I have now negative two X squared minus four X H minus two H squared, and then continue on with plus three X plus three H minus one. Of course, all of that was already within the first set of brackets. And now I still, don't forget, have my additional three terms that are here plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And that's just a big long division by h. Okay? All right. Hopefully at this point you notice there are some terms that you can combine together and other terms that will just subtract out. So for starters, I have a negative 2x squared here that subtracts off with this 2x squared. I also have a 3x, and this one's positive, that subtracts off here with a minus 3x. And also I have a negative 1 that later I'm adding a 1, those subtract off as well. So in my next step, let's actually write what's left. So we have again, f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of a negative for xh minus 2h squared plus 3h. And that is all I have left from this long string of terms in the numerator. And this is all being now divided by h. So then you have to say to yourself, okay, what do I do now? The whole goal is to do this algebra such that you don't have a division by h. So somehow we need to find a way, a clever way to get rid of that H. If you look closely, you notice in my numerator, every term has at least one H in that numerator. So what we can do is think about that as being a greatest common factor. And as such, I can just pull that factor right out of that numerator. So here's what we would have next. F prime of X is equal to the limit as H approaches zero of over here when I pull out my h out of all three terms, what remains is a negative 4x. And then here I have minus 2h because only one of the h's got pulled out and then plus three. Of course, all of that is still divided by the h in the denominator. And from this point, I hope you recognize that because I have an h in the numerator and also in the denominator, that these H's divide out for us. And so what's now left is F prime of X is equal to the limit of, as H goes to zero, of this expression, which is now just negative four X minus two H plus three, okay? So at least all of the simplification of the algebra is done for us at this point. Now what I'm ready to do is actually take the limit as h approaches zero. I still have now this time an expression that contains an h, only one place. And so now I wanna imagine that h going close to zero. In fact, at this point, you can kind of think, let's let that h be zero. Since there's no more denominator with the h in it, that would be problematic if we had a h go to zero with a zero in the denominator. Here, we do not have that. So as a result, I can literally take that limit, so I now have the f prime of x is now gonna be equal to simply, no more limit notation, since I'm taking the limit here, and I have negative four x minus two times my zero, that I'm gonna let the h actually be zero, plus three. And of course, this term right here in the middle goes to zero, since I'm multiplying the negative two by the zero. So all that remains is finally, after all this work, f prime of x is equal to negative 4x plus 3. And I'm going to box this. This particular equation, kind of take note, we started with a quadratic function in the beginning, and we used the limit definition of this derivative to find the derivative of that function. And if you look closely, this particular function itself is in fact a linear function. So taking a quadratic 
Finding its derivative reveals to us a linear function in the end. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this particular video. In the next video, we're gonna do another example of this, but in that video, we're gonna focus on a rational function. So please click on the Advantage logo to subscribe to our videos.